There are many laptops, but this one, well, it is mine. However, it has this little screen. Hey guys, it's not the first time that I'm going to make this claim. I say the best thing that you can do for your uh, computer setup to increase your productivity is to create more screen estate. And I'm a man of my word, and when picking up a laptop, I've picked one with an extra display built in. And while this extra display can come handy, it's probably not as handy as you might imagine. So, if you want to increase laptop productivity even further, you probably want to get a portable display, all right? But I already reviewed a couple of portable displays and how different they can be. Well, as it turns out, Uperfect Ugame J5 has something that no other portable displays have. This is the display. And for eagle-eyed viewers out there, you probably noticed that something's missing. What's missing is this folio, which I'm not using right now, and I'm going to explain why I'm not using it. First of all, it's a folio, it's a cover, you can turn it into a stand and protect your screen from nasty scratches. The reason why I'm not using it, because this portable display comes with the best feature ever. No, not the stand. The VESA port at the back or VESA mount at the back, which allows you to add your own stands. Well, it's a minimal stance like this one shipped to me by Uperfect. It's a pretty decent stand and it has a 3D printable bit that I've designed to actually mount it on different tripods. So that's something else you can do. But that 75 millimeter VESA stand allows you to, well, use this monitor when you're at home in a more like a desktop environment when you have a dedicated stand or maybe an arm uh, that you can put this monitor on and enjoy it. And when you need one on the go, you simply take the monitor with you and have fully portable monitor that will fit into your laptop bag. Now that you know the feature that I wish all my portable displays had, let's talk about details about this particular unit. So, Uperfect Ugame J5 is the name of this, and this is 17.3 inch 4K display with IPS panel, which means it's going to be pretty good, right? So, what are we having? This is a nice made out of aluminium display with a very thin bezel and a peculiar hole in here. I wasn't quite sure what to make of this hole because it's kind of like just there in a corner and I don't know how to use it. Clearly it's not something that you're gonna end up on your keychain ring or something. So I've asked. And, and the official answer is that you can use a pen to create a portable stand. Okay, kind of works, wobbles, I wouldn't shake the screen without risking this tipping over. I guess it's a feature. But putting the hole aside, let's talk about I.O. On one side, we have all the inputs, so that's two USB Type-C ports, which act as inputs. There is a full-size HDMI port and 3.5mm audio jack. On the other side, we have, oh, to my surprise, it's a mini USB. And you might be thinking, why mini USB? And I was thinking the same because kind of makes a little sense because I don't know about any mini USB accessories like keyboard or whatever, but apparently if you connect this display via USB Type-C, on this side you have a pass-through USB so you can connect anything you want via USB to your computer. It's nice, but I wish that would be a regular USB Type-A port. Moving on, we have five dedicated buttons that act as shortcuts for the settings and accessing the on-screen display. It's all pretty basic there and two speakers on each side. By default, this stand isn't included, so you probably have to spend extra $40 to get it, but you do have one of those folios that you can use to protect your screen and turn it into your um, stand for the desktop. Don't get me wrong, neither of these solutions is the most ergonomic way to mount your display, but it will get you there in a pinch, and the stand is so much firmer and so much better to use than that flimsy folio that I hate on pretty much every single monitor I've reviewed so far. So I consider that to be a step up. Obviously, if you are interested in mounting this in a more permanent solution, you're gonna take advantage of that VESA mount and put it properly at the height you want. Before we move any further, let's talk about a couple of issues that I've encountered, and to be fair, 
I am the one to blame because it's all explained in a manual, which I promptly ignore because it's a portable display and how hard it could be, right? So when I was trying to connect this display to my laptop via USB Type-C cable, something I've done multiple times with different monitors, I ran into a power problems to which this monitor would power on then last a couple of seconds and then power itself off, which was really annoying and I couldn't really figure out what's going on. After spending on it way too much time, I reached out to the manual and, and then I discovered recommendation for an external power supply of 3 amps or more. But that requirement created a couple of disadvantages. First of all, if you're going to take this display with you, you probably want to take a separate power brick just to power it up, just in case. And given the nature of a portable displays, I was always keen on the fact that I'm just taking a display and USB Type-C cable only. So after further experimenting, I discovered that if you lower the brightness of this panel to around a half of it, you will be able to power it off the single USB Type-C cable without the need for external power supply. But there is a catch. You have to set the brightness first in order for this to work, because without that external power supply, everything is set to 100%, and without it, you won't be able to do it with a USB Type-C cable only. I wish this was resolved in a different way, especially that USB Type-C specification allows for 100 watts and now up to 240 watts of power transfer, but it is what it is. Since everything is now figured out, let's talk about the panel itself. This is IPS panel, which means great viewing angle, great contrast and decent brightness. And even when I was dropping the brightness to about 50% to kind of use it via USB Type-C, it was still bright enough to don't look old next to my computer display, to my laptop display. Now, it is 17.3 inch, which is relatively big for portable display. It has 4K resolution with 60 Hz, and it also has 100% Adobe color gamut, uh, something I can't really verify, so I'll have to trust them on that. But looking at the color reproduction, how nice everything looks, and how easy it was to create a similar color profile to my laptop, I am able to give them a credit for it. Oh, the note about the speakers, they are okay. They are not particularly loud. So if you were hoping for a loud speakers, uh, you probably want to use that 3.5 millimeter jack to get your audio out. But they will do in a pinch. They sound as uh, average laptop speakers at best. But the star of the review is obviously the display itself and the 4K resolution. And here is where I'm personally not the biggest fan. No. If you do have a specific need for that resolution to be there, that's fine and you'll be all interested in it. But for a spare monitor for your laptop setup, I was perfectly okay with either 1080p or 1440p instead, because if you're going to use 4K resolution and attempt to take advantage of it in a creative fashion, like stacking screens, etc., you'll find that without window scaling, everything is minuscule and hard to read and it will render you counterproductive. Now, where you can take advantage of that 4K, providing you have a hardware to drive all the pixels, is gaming. A 4K resolution like that's gonna shine in the games that uh, have a really nice environment, or so RTS, where all the resolution matters, but the hard limit of 60Hz might leave some of you disappointed. As the UPerfect has gaming range of monitors with different specifications, including high refresh rates up to 240 40 Hz? I'm gonna link them in the description of this video, so do check it out. But if you want to go for a 4K model with 60 Hz and you're completely fine with it, I gave it a go with my laptop and also PlayStation 4. And while on PlayStation 4 I wasn't really taking advantage of the 4K resolution, everything looked nice though, on my laptop I was able to crank up the resolution and have a little bit of fun. I haven't noticed anything that would hinder my gameplay, there was no screen tearing, there is a free sync support, and for the most part I was having a good time. So as long as you have a hardware to drive all that 4K worth of pixels, you're probably gonna have a good time as well. In both scenarios, when I was playing the games either on my laptop or on my PlayStation 4, I was having a great time, and the inclusion of the best support allowed me to actually mount this screen in my bed on a portable microphone stand, which was great because the screen was just there, and when I was being poorly, 
I could play a couple of games and feel absolutely comfortable. Other than power requirements and the fact that the audio isn't the greatest, I don't really have a problem with this display at all. However, you'll have to pay a pretty penny for it because right now, if you want to buy it, it's going to set you about around $550. Look out for promotions because you might be able to get it cheaper. And if I've got a nice code, I'm going to list it in the description of this video too. So if you have a need for a 4K display, and you can take advantage of all of those pixels, then yeah, you perfect, you game J5 might be for you. But if you prefer different specification, like maybe 4040p uh, panel with uh, increased uh, refresh rate, check out your perfect lineup for other monitors. Maybe you find something better spec and within your price bracket because they have actually quite a wide selection of different monitors for different needs. As nice as this panel is, I'm going to stick to my guns and say like, personally, I don't need a bigger resolution than 1080p on a portable display for my laptop. Your requirements might be different. Feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section of this video to let me know what are the perfect specifications for a portable monitor for you. As for now, guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested what next, then hey, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain all that. I do have a couple of social media links listed right now on the screen, so considering following me there and start the conversation. Big thanks to you for watching, big thanks to you, Perfect, for submitting a sample for the review, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.